This week, I'm in Paris. But just when I thought it was safe to go back in the kitchen... Stop it! Get out! Jesus Christ, what's the matter? Let go! Yeah, I've seen some bad kitchens in my time, but not quite as disorganised and f***ing chaotic as this. I, I think you're a fake. And I'm just gonna leave! Because <laughs> Gordon Ramsay's gonna fucking leave. You're lazy, you put nothing into it, and you deserve a kick up the fucking ass. Paris, France, capital of the culinary world, and the city where I spent my formative years as a chef. Having lived here for three years, just so happy to be back in Paris. The French are a nation of meat lovers, each eating an average of 90 kilos of the stuff every year. A vegetarian restaurant in Paris. My God. In the heart of the Marais, one of Paris's premier neighbourhoods for gastronomic delights. Piccolo Teatro, a tiny vegetarian restaurant run by Scott Rachel McNally, is struggling to survive. It's nice to be your own boss, if you like, but uh, it's also very stressful, you know. I think if the restaurant was doing well and it didn't have all the debts that it had, then I would probably be sleeping a lot better. Millions of hungry Parisians and tourists flock past every day. But only a few are choosing to eat at Piccolo, and those that do wish they hadn't. Very fashy, mate, and put sauce on you, Yes, since Rachel took over the business, she's been losing nearly five and a half grand every month. The debts are spiralling out of control, and if things don't pick up, she'll be closed in three months. Piccolo Teatro, not me. This is a first. I spent three years working my butt off in a Parisian kitchen, and I know just how tough it can be. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Nice, nice to, to see meet you. you. Likewise, good to see you too. Now, how does a beautiful Scott find herself in the middle of Paris running a vegetarian restaurant. How did I end up in Paris? Yeah. A French man originally. OK. Um, well, I'm vegetarian since uh, I can remember, so I was attracted to this restaurant. Really? Um, I'm dying to get in. The quicker I can get in, the quicker I can get out. Indeed. <laughs> the size of it is minute. Right, Sorry. Rachel runs the place with the help of her best friend Stephanie, her only waitress. You've been friends since four? Yeah. Amazing. There are just two chefs. Commie chef Fiona only works three mornings a week. Daniel is the head chef and resident philosopher. Mais tous les mes plats, je préfère qu'il y a des succès parce que là j'ai fait avec amour. Daniel. Daniel, bonjour mon ami. Bonjour monsieur. Vous êtes le chef responsable alors. Mon fait la cuisine ici pour pour les clients et tout. D'accord. Where is the kitchen? Mais c'est l'espace, c'est extraordinaire. Regardez. Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh. Is this one from Glasgow as well? Dude, uh, where's he from? Uh, he's Brazilian. Brazilian. He's Brazilian. Okay. What dish would you like to recommend for lunch? And uh, in lasagna and pistache. Yeah, it's absolutely delicious. It's not on the menu at the moment. Is this, is this normal? Oh yes. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the madhouse. So we've got a pistachio nut, a walnut, and now a Brazilian nut. Classic. And there was a couple here um, the other day who had just got engaged that day, right. and they ordered the hummus, and they said it was the best they'd ever had in their lives. Yeah. So uh, you might want to try it. I cannot believe I'm sat here in the middle of Paris. If my chefs, Monsieur Guy Savoie and Gerard Bouchon, could see me now, they would beat the crap out of me. You know that. To start, the famous hummus salad topped with raisins and dried onions. Get off there. I love hummus, but that's disgusting. So how would you describe the food? Not particularly spectacularly exceptional. Is this girl for real? <laughs> Next up, carrot gratin, which, if done properly, should have a gorgeous bubbling cheese crust. OK, so that's the gratin there. Yeah. Bon appétit. <laughs> ah. It's almost a, a bit of an insult to a vegetarian. Fine, they don't eat meat, but they deserve some form of respect in terms of cooking vegetables properly. Steph, have you got two minutes, please? Yeah. 
Time for this bunch of jokers um, to face the music. The joking and the fun and the singing and all that crap, that's fine when you've got a success. The food was shit. It wasn't nearly there. It was a mess. Most of the customers that come here do actually leave satisfied and do enjoy the food. OK. I'm deeply concerned because I've got to get him in the right frame of mind. And standing out being a vegetarian restaurant in the middle of Paris is a fucking hard task. OK. Thank you. Bad food and bad attitude, this is going to be tough. There's a lot riding on Piccolo succeeding. Rachel's got a young son to support, and her dad has invested at least £50,000 in the business. She needs to spill the beans. You haven't paid rent since last October? Since October, £1,600 a month should have been paid. And the tax man's owed €10,000. There is a bank loan which hasn't been paid uh, for uh, about six months. It's going to take a lot of hard work to pull Piccolo back from the brink. And, and, and seriously, how bad do you want to save the business? Badly, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Of course I do. It's, uh, I don't have anything else here, you know. It's my, it's, it's my, life, it's my livelihood. It's my Piccolo clearly needs a massive shake-up. But before I make any changes, I need to see how Daniel runs the kitchen. It's Saturday night, but at 7 p.m., with the first table already seated, Rachel seems agitated. He's not ready, and there's hardly anything on the menu, so. He's not ready. Like to do some cooking yourself. What's he been doing for the last three hours? That's oh, what I'm. Yeah. I don't know. He's, a, he's a just. He's pretty chilled out. That's just the way he is. Daniel's first order is for two garden salads. Almost 20 minutes later, he's still fiddling with the salads. Tu dépêches même pas quoi. Fais un petit effort pour un petit peu plus speed, s'il te plaît, pour moi. Oui. Parce que sinon, les clients vont partir et moi, je vais perdre l'argent. Oui, c'est ça, nous, nous fonctionnons. Je vais dire ça. Parce que vous êtes là. Donc, c'est mon faute, alors. Oui, c'est ma faute. Bien sûr. Arrêtez les chronomètres. Oh. This is a joke. Je n'ai jamais vu quelque chose comme ça. Je n'ai jamais vu quelque chose comme ça. This Brazilian nut has lost his marbles. Rach, there's a pan here burning. I'm trying to change the pan for him, and he's just telling him to leave it there. He said that it's burning, the casserole is burning. It's burning, it's normal. Why is it normal? Why is it normal? Explain to me why it's normal. Wait, wait, wait. Explain to me why it's normal. Stop, 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 stop. There are now eight people in the restaurant and barely anyone is getting served. I mean, I've seen some bad kitchens in my time, but not quite as disorganised and fucking chaotic as this. Daniel is clearly hard to handle, but Rachel is the boss. You all right? Uh, no, I'm not all right. I'm really fucking pissed off. In three fucking hours, he could have made a fucking dish or two, and he's fucking doing it on purpose. He should be fucking just, ashamed. Just, I'm ashamed. Yeah. I'm fucking this guy's ashamed to go and see any fucking this customers. This guy's killing your business. This is so sad, Do you know that? But he needs to get his fucking act in gear and he needs to do something because we're going to fucking fall out big time. Anyway, I'm going inside to see what's going on. Moi, toi et moi, on est amis, quoi. Et toi, tu crois? Tu les crois? Oui, je crois. Tu les crois? Je suis très énervé, je suis très triste, hein? J'espère que t'es content. Bon appétit. Ouais, il faut rigoler. Il faut pas rigoler tout le temps, hein? Quand c'est un bordel, quand tu perds l'argent, c'est pas rigolo, hein? Daniel's lack of respect is disgusting. Get him out, send him home and fucking you know, salvage something. Get some money in the till. This is happening now. Apparently it happened last weekend as well. Guy's a joke. Sherry, va à la maison. C'est pas possible. Il y a rien d'autre à servir, c'est fini. Tu vas à la maison, on parle plus, on parle à plaie. Mais c'est sérieux, tu mets moi dehors. Je suis sérieuse. Oui, oui, absolument. Je suis sérieuse. C'est Steph qui va servir les gens. Je suis sérieuse. Non, je suis sérieuse. Les gens sont trop attendus. J'ai la honte. J'ai la honte. Tu vas à la maison, ma. C'est mon décision finale. Attends, 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 attends. 
Vamos poner una solución. Bonsoir, monsieur, madame. Bonsoir. Why is it all to customers? Vous avez payé la edición déjà? We've asked nicely. Where are the heavies when you need them? Mais je... I know, no, no, for pay. No, let's go. Come on, uh, Daniel, please. Let's go. 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 No, okay, 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 okay. Well, it wasn't a very good experience. The, it was uh, entertaining. It was entertaining. Highly it was entertaining. Dinner theater with the <laughs> plates crashing around in the background. Our food wasn't very good, to put it politely. The couscous was crunchy. The tart was completely burnt to a crisp. Burns. <laughs> Quite burnt. It looks like I'm going to have to take Daniel to the nut house myself. <laughs> It's very hard to control them, and that is a problem. <sighs> fucking shame, man. Saturday night, what a fucking mess. He let you do He's still here! When? Ça va, Bano. Fuck me. Fuck me. Let's start again. We could uh, not I have can't. continued with that. I can, we can't, and I can't take him back now after that, because that, that's just totally yeah. unexpected. It's completely disrespectful to me. How much do we take? 150 euros. Mm. Fucking disaster, basically. You may have lost your chef. But fuck me, you've got your restaurant back. I spent three years working in Paris in my early 20s, so coming back should have been a dream come true. But last night, vegetarian restaurant Piccolo Teatro hit rock bottom. How are we? I've called a crisis meeting with the remaining staff. Right? Yeah. Good. Fiona? Yeah? Enchanté. Enchanté. How are you today? Fine. Good. And you are the daytime cook? Morning chef, yeah. Excellent. Fiona can't work evenings, so Rachel is on the lookout for a new head chef. In the meantime, I'll need Stephanie to help out in the kitchen during service. What I'm trying to say to you, when you see how easy it is, you'll be amazed. I can help for a wee while. A wee while. Cooking at this level doesn't have to be difficult. Any of us could do it. I've only got four days to turn things around, so there needs to be a big change in attitude around here. I know it's nice to have a little sort of cosy restaurant in the middle of the night, but we've got to start thinking about some form of discipline. Yeah, I think Daniel is exceptional. Like, and, and can I just say one thing? It's very complicated working for a friend. It's very complicated for her, uh, and it's very complicated for me. Friendship, whatever, it's got nothing to do with it. It's a business first. Yes. And the quicker we start getting our minds around to turning it into a, a business, this everybody else follows suit. Money. But before we do anything, yeah, and I mean seriously, before we do anything, this place needs a good fucking clean. clean yeah. yeah. Rachel opens for lunch at weekends, but there's no way we can serve lunch today. Where do you start? Huh? Fucking hell. Is that fucking pigeon food? It's nice, nice. It's not... Oh, fucking hell. What is that? Hello, chicken. Carrot and lasagna? Yeah. Fuck me. Watch out, there's a lasagna coming. Don't touch it, it bites. Yeah. This is food which Gordon wants to throw out, because once it's had a wash, it'll be perfectly fine. You can see why I don't want you to eat anything from the fridge. It's got a cinnamon in it. I don't, the, the... It's off. Yeah, I know. When was the last time that was clean? It's a blessing in disguise that meat hasn't been cooked in this kitchen. Fuck you now. With hygiene standards this low, they would have been wheeling out the customers by the coffin load. That's food in there, eh? Yeah. Oh. Huh? Why the fuck would anyone keep fucking all the flies up there? Rachel used to be the waitress here. And what's crystal clear is that she's still acting like one. Fucking hell. Got to take responsibility. This is your money here. Huh? Rotten and fresh food stored together. None of this is safe to eat. Why have you let it get into this state? Ta-da. No, <laughs> we're going to start cleaning again. Now, I've got to work out how on earth do you make a vegetarian restaurant in Paris successful? Fewer than 2% of the French population are vegetarian. But 27 million tourists flock to Paris every year. Surely, some of them are veggies. Are you a vegetarian? Vegetarian or no? No. No, 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 no. 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 I like meat. You like meat? <laughs> yeah. 
Have you ever been to a vegetarian restaurant? No. 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 Um, are you vegetarians? No. no. Finding a vegetarian in Paris, yeah, is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Are you vegetarians? No. No. Why not? Because I like meat. Are you a vegetarian? Uh, yes, I eat some fish, but I'm vegetarian. The only way Piccolo will survive is by serving veggie food that even meat eaters will love. Um, all good food comes out of a small kitchen. Yes. It's time to get started on Piccolo's drop-dead delicious new menu. Until Rachel finds a new head chef, I'm relying on part-time commie chef Fiona. Kidney beans in first. Yeah. Beans in. A rich, spicy two-bean chilli should have the veggies and carnivores chomping at the bit. Keep it all nice and fresh. Yeah. Yeah? Summertime, exactly. Lovely, huh? There's also a very cheesy tomato and aubergine gratin to replace that tasteless slop I was served yesterday. Yeah. Seasoning is really important, yeah. I never put salt in my... In my you cooking. never put salt in your cooking? No. no. Not, no, not never. OK. But I'm vegetarian French. Vegetarian French, you can still season things. I know their food is bland in general, but you can still season it. Yes? Mmm, <laughs> look at that, look. Mmm, salt. Ooh, salt. <laughs> I'm gonna look. Salt. Ooh, okay, salt. Okay, yes. I use it. Ooh, in England we go like this, it brings you good luck, yes? <laughs> yes, yes. So now every day I want to put salt. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. Fiona's worked a few extra hours today, and it's that sort of commitment this business needs. 5.30, go pick up your daughter. Merci. Okay. Huh? Thank yeah. you. Uh, bonsoir. Yeah. OK. Et à demain, oui. Passe un bonsoir. Merci. OK. On a besoin de courage ce soir. Oui. oui. Up. Very good day. I'm happy. Stephanie has agreed to cook tonight. But at 6 o'clock, neither she nor Rachel are anywhere to be seen. If they think I'm their new head chef, they can go spin. Earlier, Rachel went off to feed her pregnant cat. Stephanie had to go and sleep because she wasn't feeling very well. And look, we're an hour away from opening and there's not one fucker in here bar myself. So, uh, yeah, if you're going to open a restaurant, fucking don't play at it, work at it. Uh, no sign of Steph yet? No. Anyone want to call her? Or... I, I will call her, yeah. I just would expect that she would have been back. I'll give her a ring. No kittens yet. Rachel's up to her neck in debt. The business is on its knees and yet it all seems a big joke to her. Right, try and hurry up, please. OK. OK. I'm starting to feel like they're taking the mickey out of me. I need to know, you know, are you seriously interested in turning this around? I don't get the feeling and I'm just like, what the fuck am I doing here? Busting my ass off in your establishment to help turn this around. I... You went home. And you said this morning you'd be back I at 3.30. I my cat who's about that. to give birth. I had no choice and I had to have a shower. Okay, I thought we were going to be doing some stuff in the kitchen together. So uh, you didn't no, get... Nobody said anything uh, right. about said that. said you'd be back soon, but never mind. OK, are we going to get serious or... Because, you know, should I tell you how I feel? I'd rather fuck off home. That's how I feel. Because I don't feel any form of commitment. Um, I, I, I think it's an incredibly admirable enterprise, what you're doing. Oh, and I think oh, Rachel's me, stop, totally stop, committed. Stop, 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 come on. Let's get a little bit real than uh, that. Let, let, look, let, I'm committed no to her, but I'm not, I'm not, you know... I, I, mean, I just I don't get it with you. To be, to I, I think right. you're a fake. I don't, I, I, I don't get any fucking... Not, I'm not asking you to lay down a red carpet or kiss my ass. I just, I want commitment. And I don't feel that. That's no. all. Well, you're not going to get that if you tell people they're a fake. I, I, but you, you've just arrived. Yes, and I'm just going to leave. I'm really committed to Rachel, but I'm not... I just can't... I just refuse to be harassed yeah. and insulted. Harassed. Insulted? Yes. Incredible. Harassed and insulted. Fuck me. Take a good look at yourself. Thank you. Oh, you're doing there. I've got lots of fucking people tonight and you're leaving me in the fucking lurch. Yeah, but I can't... Right, well, I will fucking leave, leave then. Here. OK. Bye, bye. Tuesday, nice one. Sorry. We're now down to one member of staff. And I just don't know if she's committed to saving her business. I've never worked with such fucking Olympics in all my life. I've had enough. Rachel can sort out this staff crisis herself. Yeah, Gordon Ramsay's gonna fucking leave. 
mad panic trying to find somebody to work uh, with about 10 fucking minutes to go. Uh, so I just went to the Scottish pub and they said to come over here and uh, one of the girls in there phoned somebody and I found somebody. So she's coming in 10 minutes. She's going to be in the restaurant in 10 minutes. I think I, I'm just, I've just been so many crises that I'm just starting to get sort of less stressed about it, you know. Leaving Rachel alone is the best thing I could have done. There's not much in the fridges. There's some, there's some salad. She's found a temporary waitress and has decided to go into the kitchen herself. Uh, OK, so I, I'm actually going to be in the kitchen because the, normally my friend was supposed to be in the kitchen and she's she has walked out, so... Okay. Well, so who's in the, the dining room? I found a waitress to come and... Okay. and uh, so well, you... you uh, so I'm going to be in here. Okay. I'm giving Rachel one last chance to prove she really wants to save this restaurant. Yeah, tarts in the oven. So we get the plate out and put the salad on there. Thankfully, these new dishes are foolproof. The chilli's ready to go. The gratin and the chilli for table five. And the gratins simply need heating up. The first of Piccolo's new hearty dishes are already hitting the spot. I love vegetarian food. <laughs> and about four minutes now for the main course. Don't forget to give them some bread. On yeah. table eight. Dad, can, uh, can I phone you back? <laughs> All right. Oh, cool. Was well, India coming to do some work? Oh, magic. Okay. Rachel's dad has a financial right, okay, stake in Piccolo magic, and has been looking for a new head chef. Speak to you later. Bye. Oh, my dad's coming over with somebody. And she's a chef, so she's coming over tomorrow with my dad for... I don't know if she's coming over to, for how long, but she's going to help out anyway for the time being. Oh, that's good news. Rachel has just been thrown a lifeline. <sighs> Fucking hell, what a nice. Um, it started off as a disaster. I felt at 6.30 this afternoon that I really wanted to get the fuck out of it, to be honest. Um, no substance, no commitment, and uh, two sort of tizzies playing at running a restaurant, so... Stephanie fucked off, her attitude stinks, and uh, Rachel's finally woken up. I'm glad she started to sweat, because that's what it's like running a restaurant, and uh, if she really wants this to succeed, then get used to working like this, because it's a business. We've got a phenomenal possibility of a great success here, but it needs a commitment. And that doesn't mean a commitment from a waitress, it needs a commitment from a boss, somebody who's running the place. So, you know, you proved tonight that you can do it so fucking well done okay cheers now things are finally looking up it's time to deal with one of rachel's biggest mistakes not opening for weekday lunch hordes of hungry tourists swarm to marry looking for a quick cheap lunch and many head for the snack bar at the end of rachel street She should be working hard to grab a slice of the action, but doesn't think it's worth it. We opened at lunchtime for about a month, and uh, it was a complete waste of time, really. Uh, but there was just nobody here. There was no customers. We had maybe two, three sometimes. Paying someone in the kitchen, someone in the thing, and then the, because you're doing the starting main course, there's a lot of washing up. <laughs> Let's go get some business. Now, I'll What's prove that by offering a quick, good-value lunch, Rachel could earn some much-needed cash. Madame, 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 c'est 200 mètres à gauche. Six euros. Madame, 200 mètres, tout droit, à gauche, le restaurant. Six euros. But I know this stubborn Scott will take some convincing. So unbeknownst to her, I'll be opening the restaurant for lunch myself. Always dreamt of having my own restaurant in Paris. And finally, it's here. Chez moi à Paris. Unfortunately, it's a fucking vegetarian restaurant. So, uh, yeah, soup and a roll. If the soup's good, they'll be back for dinner. They've all sat down at the same time. Now I'm in the shit. There's roasted vine tomato soup with cheese on toast for a bargain price of six euros. And you don't have to be veggie to enjoy that. Service. It's me again. Love. Usually roasted this morning. It's been in. Bingo, bingo. Good. Rachel better appreciate this. I don't even work this hard in my own restaurant. Coming up, four. Serve uh, the other people first. Right, that's very kind, thank you. Je suis dans le mer. Do you leave a tip, by the way? Uh, there's a little something extra. Okay, good man, good man. Excellent. Right, six. Not opening for lunch in such a prime location is either madness or laziness. 
The soup was the best soup we've ever had. It was really, really yummy. This was fabulous for us in terms of price. 20 past two. I feel like a pig in shit. Fucking marvellous. Now all I've got to do is show Rachel what her laziness is costing her. Morning. Hello. How are you, my darling? I'm all right. I'm a bit tired because my cat gave birth in the night. That's fantastic. So I was looking after. How many cats have you got? There's only two, luckily. Sorry. We bowl a soup. If someone opened my restaurant without telling me, so believe me, I'd notice immediately. Good. Can you make this soup? I did make this soup, yeah. I've had a fucking busy morning. What have you been up to? Can you not see the sign outside? No. No. Ah. Oh. There. I, 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 I don't know what we've taken. And I'm not fucking around by any means. But did for you me, say all that this morning? On six euros a head, I swear to God, I am not fucking around. And I don't know if I believe you. I'm just not quite sure I believe you, actually. But anyway, OK, I think that's, at six euros, that's an awful lot of people that you've served soup for. Oh, something was, was I the shit. I swear to God, they were standing up there, and there was a queue, and they were coming in and coming out. I cooked and I served on my jack. Right. 200. 300. That's 430. Clearly, money talks. Seriously? As an eye-opener? It worked. 450 euros. I'm absolutely fucking astonished, really. Uh, it's really exciting. If we could do that every day, then the whole business could turn around just from, just from lunchtime alone. I'm nearing the end of my week in Paris, where I'm trying to save vegetarian restaurant Piccolo Teatro and rescue a damsel in distress. So you just don't have the support of all your family and different friends. And, you know, quite often I will phone my mum or my dad and be, ah, down the phone, you know. <laughs> It's been disaster after disaster. Jeez, Steph, nice one. Oh, um, fucking hell, man. But the cavalry has just strolled into town. Hearing of Rachel's crisis, her father Brian, who has invested in Piccolo, has flown in from Scotland, bringing 23-year-old chef oh, buddy, India. Nice to... Sorry, first name, excuse me? Brian. Brian, nice to see you. Welcome. Am I might be pleased to see you? And oh. this is India. Uh, this is India. The troops. My daughter. Uh, how am I, my darling? India's, India's uh, going to be the a right-hand man. I can't wait. Or something. <laughs> uh, we need it. I'm going to go back to the hotel, pick up my weights and right. get back in. I like Brian already, and I need to bring him up to speed. Look, soup with the cheese on toast for six euros. And about you took 400, 400 euros? About 90 people in here. Really? That. Six euros. Mm. Well, it's quite fucking incredible. <laughs> well, it shows you what you're doing wrong. Exactly. I'll be more enthusiastic and yeah. motivated if there's money coming in. What do you think's wrong with the business? Well, I think a bit more has to be put into it, a bit more commitment from Rachel. Yeah. I think, I think her, her, her weaknesses are running a business. And just take charge. It's Good. And you're going to be here for the next three months, right? <laughs> <laughs> Style, right? Thank God for Brian. Now all I hope is that India's got what it takes. Um, I'll be leaving my work, uh, my family, first time abroad on my own. Um, be very hard, um, but I'm sure I'll do. I'll do good and I'll produce good food. I know Paris is an exciting place for a young chef. I was the same age as India when I came to live here. And there is the 83 Rue de la Roquette, 20 metres squared flat, absolutely minute. It's amazing. I used to sit there with the windows open and just have this amazing baguette, yeah? Cafe creme and just sit there and think about recipes, ideas. and then walk up and down the street, go inside boulanger, patisseries, and then come up with dessert ideas, run back and start writing them down. Paris is an inspiring city. I want to start India off on the right foot by showing her the incredible produce she'll be using if she stays here. On the place aujourd'hui pour voir les très bons produits. Maintenant, c'est un saison extraordinaire, non? C'est l'été, oui, on a tous, tous ces fruits et ces tomates qui apparaissent, donc il euh, y a de quoi s'amuser pour, pour un cuisinier. Quoi. Très bien, c'est du beautiful stuff. The quicker India learns French, the better. Non, peut-être. Quelques, quatre, quelques betteraves. Quelques betteraves. Oh, voilà. That's fantastic. La tourte plaque chérie, s'il vous plaît. C'est une belle histoire. Voilà, merci. Uh, the colour's amazing. Look at us. Uh, right. Right, right, right. Huh? Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. The flavour, look at the colour of them. Yeah. Huh? If India's as enthusiastic in the kitchen, there may be hope for Piccolo yet. My new best friend. Merci. Merci, Joël. Passe a très bonne journée. Merci, Joël. 
Excellent. Off you go. Okay. Um, some exciting stuff there, no? Oh, amazing. Huh? Lovely. And you, you, the French sound is fantastic. Oh, thank you. Back at Piccolo, Brian's pep talk seems to have done the trick. Rachel has arrived early. Tonight's India's first service, so I'm going to be on hand to help out if she needs me. How old were you first started cooking? Fifteen. Fifteen? Well, really? no, sorry, fifteen when I was a KP and then six, just turned sixteen and they were, like, getting... Really? That's good. That's very good. Yeah. Mushrooms. OK. A little bit of seasoning. I've added a new hot starter, a classic on any bistro menu. Pan-fired wild mushrooms on hot buttered brioche. A little bit of parsley in there. OK, I'm just letting them all sort of cascade. Now have a little taste of the gyros. Full of flavour. India in the kitchen for the first time. Work as a team. If you guys aren't talking, yeah, she won't know what's going on and you won't have a clue what's going on. We're just going to start off a brand new relationship, yeah? Thank fuck you're here. Yeah, yeah. I was 23 when I came to Paris for the first time, you know that? Yeah. And I was absolutely shitting myself. I'm shitting yeah. myself. Yeah, <laughs> good. That's a healthy <laughs> sign. Yeah? India's got seven years' experience as an assistant chef. But tonight, I want to see whether she's got the ability to take charge of this kitchen. We'll organise the tickets from left to right. And as we send the starters, we'll just put a little crisscross off there. Okay. For the main course, you have aubergine, mozzarella and tomato. So, now you tell me, what are you going to do? Two soup and a... Uh... Tart. Good. What was I concerned about? This kitchen's never known such speed and efficiency. And where's the ticket, please? It'd be a lot easier if we got a ticket for dessert. Right now, the only weak link in this team is the boss. OK, the mushrooms. I want to make damn sure she knows how lucky she is. What's the difference between her and Daniel? Just go back four nights ago. Seriously, no, but in terms yeah. of you couldn't get a salad out. This has been real now. This no, is, no, yeah, yeah, you've yeah, got absolutely. a fucking gem in there. No, 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 absolutely. Absolute gem. Now the kitchen's in safe hands, I want Rachel to realise that to make money, Piccolo's vegetarian food needs to have mass appeal. Paris screams sex, glamour, indulgence and hedonism. Everything that vegetarian food isn't, but needs to be. I brought you here tonight to sort of confirm that Paris is about sexiness, indulgence, Lots of cream, lots of butter, and they flaunt lots it. Lots of cream, butter, and cheese in my restaurant. Yeah, and are I want you... everyone to come in and say, ooh, quel bon surprise. OK, good. I had a <laughs> yummy <laughs> dinner tonight, and okay. I'm not so... veggie, and I loved it. Thank you. Tomorrow, we're going out on the street, and we're going to make your restaurant fucking sexy. Last night, Rachel got excited about food. Maybe we're finally on the same wavelength. This afternoon, we're going out on the streets of Gay Parry, armed with tempting tarts, on a mission to convince everyone that vegetarian food has changed. The objective today, take in boring, bland vegetarian food to something sexy, vibrant and a pure indulgence. While India fills the savoury tarts with a tasty herb goat cheese, commie chef Fiona and I are making a very naughty chocolate mousse to fill the sweet ones. That will give any French tart a run for its money. Don't worry about the calories, OK? Yeah? <laughs> yeah same trade. Bedtime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brian, you're doing a grand job. Vegetarian food is no longer boring. Oh, um, all in the tree. Lovely. Mm -hmm. It's time to put Piccolo on the gastronomic map of Paris. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> to make sure no one can miss us, we've enlisted the help of a few of Paris's finest tarts. Are you a vegetarian tart? Help yourself, please. Gracias, gracias. I love vegetarian tarts. But if we're venu dans un resto, on a resto vegetarian, c'est ce que je disais, Vegetarian. 
If the enthusiasm of these punters is anything to go by, it's going to be busy for tonight's launch. Sweet. Delicious. Piccolo's future looks so much rosier, but it depends on whether India is ready to trade her settled life in Edinburgh for this head chef's job in Paris. I've spoke to Rachel. Um, yeah. I'll take the position as long as she That's great news. gets her finger out her arse uh -huh. and starts working hard and on their own time. As soon as you go away, it better not. No? Yeah. No. Keep it up. You've got to stand strong on that. Yep, yep. And yep. you're 10 years younger than yep. the owner, but you're 10 years more mature. And don't fall in love. No, I won't. Fuck them. Oh. <laughs> I'm too busy. <laughs> exactly. I want to make sure Brian's going to keep the pressure on, as I'm still worried about Rachel's attitude. They're going to have to seriously run it as a business and make money, which they've got every chance of doing. I hope, finally, she's, um, she gets a message. But you need to make sure that she stays disciplined on it. That's one big ask from you. Well, no, she has to all I can discipline. do is try. Yep. I can only do so much. Yep. Uh, anyone, uh, yourself, or anyone who, who may, she may listen to for advice, business advice, can only do so much. It's down to her. Thank you. In just a few hours, we're launching Piccolo's new sexy vegetarian menu, and India's decided to add one of her own dishes. Got beetroot, goat cheese mixed uh, salad, mm -hmm. and the, the dressing is chive. Basil and mm. olive oil. So we can do that as a starter. Ooh, that nice. Would you like a taste? That's lovely. Mm. Nice. Nice. Love it. All the dishes on the new menu are indulgent, rich, and filling, like this toffee apple tartar tan. So when we cut through the apples, it's got this really nice dark caramel. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> and creamy okay. pea and courgette cheese tart. Beautiful. Goat cheese is lovely. Little blocks like that. As it cooks, it just melts across there. After all the disasters, tonight's launch needs to mark a new beginning for Piccolo and for Rachel. You are the boss, and what you say goes. And they're all going to follow suit. If they see you not giving a fig, and you, you know, over relaxed and over comfortable, everybody else does it. And you've got such an amazing chance here. I need to, to behave more as a boss. Yeah, and if people, if anyone that's unemploying is not going to listen to me, then they can fuck off, basically. Um, new menu, new chef, new attitude. I like that Rachel's stuff, talking the talk, but at opening time, she's yeah. still not ready. Right, ready to open the doors up? I need some bread first. Who's going to get the bread? Garden. <laughs> Where the fuck am I getting bread this time of night? It'll be fine. I'm chilled, I'm chilled. Yep. You're always chilled, are <laughs> you talking about? Rachel's okay, also left it till the last okay, minute to get an extra waitress. OK, bye, bye, bye. Is that Laura? She's going to see a show, she can't. <laughs> Her constant careless and unprofessional attitude is really depressing me. Can you go? How about thank you, you miserable wee bitch? Oh, thank you. Hey, you That's right, with a capital fucking B. Hey. And may we have a ticket for the dessert tonight, please? We do have one ticket. Très bien, merci, chérie. <laughs> no ticket, no food. Uh, I'll be here. Our tarts have worked their magic, and the restaurant is filling up quickly. Bread. Sure. Right, it's all at the same time. You've got one tart, one gratin, and one salad. Uh, sure. Piccolo's new menu is a million miles from the bland, brown slop they were serving just a few days ago. So think with me, two tarts in the oven, OK? OK. If we both think about them, we don't forget them. OK. There's also a beautiful, creamy, chilled melon soup, and India's beetroot salad is an instant hit. I like a good beet. I like that salad, by the way. It's nice and fresh. Yeah, delicious. I, I have a feeling you all have food in me. Mm. So what tables are ready? Four and just four? Seven. Seven? The only problem is the rather charmless service. You can put it anywhere. Right, OK. Vous ton cul, chérie. That means move your ass. Yeah. 
At least the food is keeping everyone happy. Make sure they save room for dessert. The ashes were beautiful. Yeah. The mushroom thing was just spectacular. I always thought vegetarian food was bland, boring, uh, but obviously it's not. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Everyone, yeah? Vegetarian cooking has changed. Rabbit food is out. Sexy, indulgent, vegetarian cuisine is in. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Tonight proves that Piccolo has the potential to be a success, but I'm still very worried about the future. I'm not 100% convinced that Rachel has the right attitude to run a business. And if this doesn't work, and she doesn't make money in this place, unfortunately, she's only got herself to blame, because it's all here. Right, listen, don't let me down. Okay. And so far, yeah, you've done a fucking good job. Okay. Yeah, Keep it up. Okay. Stay nice and calm. Okay. Work hard. Okay. Yeah. And I know damn well you can do it. Okay? okay. Keep in touch. Okay. Yeah. Best of British. Okay. See you later. Well done. Hey. Good luck. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. And thank fuck we're here. Remember that. Okay. Now make it yours. Yes? Thank you. By the end of the night, Piccolo took a record-breaking 1,000 euros. Two minutes, Ten thank times you. more than the first night I arrived. You're not the head waitress. You're the boss. Okay? Yeah. Yeah? Right. Goodbye. I'll see you soon. Yeah. And good luck. Yes? Thanks very much, Rick. Okay. Keep Cheers. it going. Cool. Yeah? If not, not, I'll come back and run it. I'd love to have my own restaurant in Paris. Yeah. You know that? Good luck. Cool, thanks. See you well. soon, yes? Cheers. Take thanks. care. Everything about the restaurant is, I think, is going to change thanks to this experience. So, really, really pleased with this. There's just one last thing I've been dying to do before I leave Paris. Fucking hell, have I missed you? I'm back in Paris, and there's bad news. Piccolo Teatro has closed for good. When I left six weeks ago, the place had huge potential, a great new menu, and a talented young chef in the kitchen. What a shame. I want to know why it all went so wrong. And the first person I've arranged to meet is India. Nice to see you. Nice and to see you. What a shame that we're meeting here. Yeah. I was hoping to be back in the Marais. Me too, me too. Seeing you in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Damn, what happened? You had to go home, pick up your stuff, etc. Yep. And right back in Paris, uh, it was a shambles. Complete shambles. It was a mess, there was flies, mice. Uh... What, when, when you came back? Yeah. It took me like four days to clean the restaurant. But where was Rachel? Uh, she, uh, she wasn't there. It was me and our father. We opened up and we'd done a lunch service. You uh, opened up without her? Yep. Just, I, I made a beautiful menu up. I'd done all your, all your dishes uh -huh. and I added some more dishes on. Um, and we'd done a great lunch service, but then Brian just says, no, nope, that's it, I've had enough. What a shame. I'm so sad not to be here. I love it so much. Yeah. And I love the food. Yeah. It's a shame. Rachel's laziness has cost India her job. There's no pressure. I want to make sure her career doesn't suffer. Let's look at get you some work experience in London. If she's not going to, you know, take full advantage of your level of excitement, then fuck it. I will. OK. OK? OK. I just can't believe how irresponsible and selfish Rachel's been. She's agreed to meet me today, and I want to hear what she's got to say for herself. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, uh, where's uh, madam? Not coming. Oh, come on. Surely she can face the music, at least have a word. I've asked her. I just asked her oh, that's ridiculous. 15 minutes ago. Ah, please to come. Gordon, I have no control over my daughter. I'm Rachel's immaturity is incredible. Brian's been propping up her business for years. And now that the merde has hit the fan, she's leaning to it. What a shame. Well, what I'm, an absolute I, I, fucking shame. I'm sorry, shame. I, I can only apologise. Brian, you've got nothing to be sorry about. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more sorry for you. Well, uh, these things happen, Gordon. Uh, we left with a setup. We, I didn't leave it in a, in a, in a shit condition. Mm. And Rachel didn't try it? I mean, you know, did... No. No. From India's point of view, India did her best. She came over and... Uh, but she, she, frankly, she didn't get the backup. <laughs> India didn't get the backup, so... No. I felt, well, I probably didn't get the backup either, so... I, I couldn't see it going on. You tried to help you. In an attempt to salvage something from the mess and recoup his investment, I mean, Brian is selling the business. 
What about the debts? What happens to the debts? Yeah, there was two loans on the business and I paid one of them off. Um, you're an amazing guy. You've bailed her out. 40 minutes late, Rachel decides to show her face. Take a seat. How are you? I'm fine. Very well, thank you. Uh-huh. When India came back, excited and motivated to come and support your business, and she walked into a shithole. Yeah, it was a mess. It was, an... it was a disaster. Why? Um, the place was as it was when you left. You're lazy, you put nothing into it, and you deserve a kick up the fucking ass, okay. Missy. And I, I'm, I'm amazed. I, I really am. The point is that I have been stressed out and not enjoying the... Uh, I've been stressed out, and since I closed, decided to close down, I feel like a big weight is lifted off my shoulders. I'm sleeping for the first time in three years. You had every possibility, Rachel, of making this successful. That's the decision I've made, and I'm feeling really happy about it. And it's fascinating to watch you, in a very cocky way... I'm not being cocky at all. ...use and say your that father's feeling... money and abuse it. You're very right. lucky. Right, I've had enough. Oh. I had enough of your abuse. I don't need this delegation. I don't need it. Sorry. I'm out of here. Abuse? I don't need it. Oh. What can I say, God? What can I say? Oh, Thank you. Again, thanks for coming in the... Oh, fuck. Russians close easily especially when the owners aren't committed 110% to put it back on track. The only saving grace for my week at Piccolo is that I discovered India. I've offered her work experience at my London restaurant, Boxwood. Just got butterflies in my tummy, just want to get in the kitchen and start working. She'll be joining a brigade of 18 chefs led by head chef Stuart Gillis. Good to meet you. Young, tenacious. Talented, yeah. yeah, and dying to learn. And you love food? I love food. Right, that's a starting qualification for me, love food. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way on earth I'm going to let a talented young girl like India Maybe forget her dream. I think she she'll be at home back. here and she can shine. If Rachel can't spot the talent in India, then I definitely can. This girl's got a great future. I'm going to get 40 covers coming in, so get, get your head in gear. That was cool. Try to wag your OK. Okay. Indulge, come on, Hen. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't say that much. I like that, it's nice. A vegetarian's delight. Capaccio okay. wagyu oh. beef with fucking caviar. Huh? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Get in there, my girl. Time's running out for the curry lounge, an Indian restaurant with more style than substance. Hey, it's Nottingham, not Bollywood. Who went out and saw this idea in a restaurant and thought, fuck me, this is amazing? This salesman turned restaurateur thinks gimmicks sell food. That looks like a large pair of knickers. What is that? And in the kitchen, I'm dealing with a chef who's past his sell-by date. You're jealous because he's a lot younger than you. No, 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 no. That's what it is. <laughs> Look at the sneaky little fuckers. <laughs> it's time to knock some sense into them. Let's go and... Yeah, pummel him. I'm off to Nottingham, where they're nuts about curry. There's a staggering 18 Indian restaurants in one square mile of the city centre. Where better to eat the nation's favourite food? I love a good curry. Here in the heart of the Midlands, Nottingham, this place has more restaurants than any other city across Britain. So the chances of finding a good curry is quite high. The new kid on the block is the 110-seater Curry Lounge. Owner Raz a former pharmaceutical sales manager, opened the restaurant six months ago. In the hope of becoming Nottingham's curry king, he spent nearly half a million quid on building his very own Bollywood dream. We generally wanted to create something that had a bit of a wow factor that was, fuck me, look at this, it's wow. But Nottingham's not been wowed by the curry lounge. Raz's bling palace loses three grand a week and can't survive for long. I've put a lot of my own money into this business, but if we don't start hitting that eight, eight and a half thousand pound a week break even figure, um, we, we potentially might not see Christmas. I absolutely love Indian food, and this is the first time I've worked in an Indian restaurant in Britain, so I'm really excited. Raz is so proud of his Bollywood palace that he's prepared to bend the truth a little to get it noticed. 
Question Awards, best Indian restaurant. Wow. Hold on a minute. Runner up in 207. Bullshitting fucker. Hello, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? And um, first name, sorry? Raz. Raz, Raz good to see you. Any chance just turn that music down so I can hear you? Would you mind? Sorry. Excellent. Who designed it? Um, well, most of us stuff. You see, it was ideas I'd picked up from various places. It looks fucking ghastly. <laughs> Where did he get his inspiration? Lap dancing clubs? How many screens have you got? We've got seven in total. You don't go to direction to watch television? No, but... What in the fuck are they? That's a water feature, Gordon. It's a water so... feature? Yeah. Holy <laughs> mackerel. <laughs> After seeing what Raz has done to the decor, I hope his taste hasn't made it onto the menu. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Are you the restaurant manager? No. I'm a head waitress. Head waitress. How popular is that, create your own curry? Yeah, that's really popular with people. They get to create their own. Yeah. Almost like a sort of curry pick and mix. Yeah. Create your own curry? What a crazy idea. Oh, well, when in Rome, let's see if they can make this monstrosity. Well, let's what? go for a little bit of a uh, chicken korma uh, with prawns. Do you want it medium? Uh, no, I'm going to go for hot. Hot? Wow. And cooking my dodgy DIY okay. curry is a man with 20 years' experience in Indian cuisine, executive chef Zahir Khan. This kitchen is designed by me, built by me, created by me, so it's my baby. If someone says, your baby is dirty, I'll kick it up. Working under him is a highly skilled brigade of chefs flown in from India. Congratulations on the best restaurant in Nottingham. <laughs> Runner-up. <laughs> yeah, nice small detail there. Marketing bollocks. <laughs> Marketing bollocks. We're not doing anything untoward. And just when I thought I'd seen it all. That's Holy shit. <laughs> There's What's your pole going. What? Chili cheese naan. That's my what? Chili cheese naan. Christ <laughs> almighty. That There's looks like a large pair of knickers. What is that? <laughs> it's basically a naan stand. At Christmas time, I can understand slightly pissed, but <laughs> fuck me, they don't come out like that all the time, do they? You can get three or four naan on there, rather than using four plates. Great, isn't it? When you sat with your girlfriend, you don't want to talk to her. Say, hey, sweetheart. Hello. Fuck off. Oh, no, not you, yeah. <laughs> Dash, how are you? I'm fine. So, out. Sea bass at the curry lounge. Mm. Fuck. Dry. Tasteless. No salt, no seasoning. Nothing. Bloody hell. A terrible dish. And I didn't even design it myself. Now for my DIY chicken and prawn spicy korma. Very greasy. It's got a film of oil on top. Chicken's really dry. If every customer goes for a DIY curry, this restaurant must be serving up some real disasters. I don't know, you look at it now and it's like, it's almost on the verge of being pretentious. Do you know, and it's lost its authenticity because it's trying to be too smart for its own good. And then out comes the fucking swinging naan. <laughs> Kitchen's through. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. The chef's name Apparently, is... a man who's worked in Zach. India's best hotels Zach. is responsible for this. Yeah. It doesn't add up. Hmm? Zach Khan. Yeah. Okay. This is Zach. Zach. Gordon. Hi. How, are How are you? Fine. You are the cleanest chef I've ever seen in my entire life. Thank you. Immaculate. Thank you. Shouldn't he be at school, that one, though? <laughs> Look at it. Amazing. Okay. Thank fuck for those ears, otherwise the hat would fall off. <laughs> okay. And when I first arrived, I was sort of uh, confused the minute yeah. I arrived. The decor threw yeah. me. Yeah. And so did the food. The food was... The food was bland. And if someone asks you... Yes. Korma, which is supposed to be mild and creamy and yes. sweetish. The guest yeah. insisting, no, I want it hot. Mm. So what, what <laughs> chef has to do? Put chilies. I felt there was no personality. Nothing individual. It's very plain and very boring. Mm. The kind of food I could get anywhere. We get regular comments every yeah. night okay. how I'm, I'm, fresh I'm, not, and I'm not interested food. in the yeah. positives. Oh, I know. And my staff yeah. in my restaurant mm. listen to negatives. Right. I'm not here for positives. So but what I'm trying to say is I found my lunch experience to be bland. Right. And where that sits anywhere connected mm. to Indian authentic cuisine, it's game over. Mm. This business is on the verge of closing. We're short of customers and we're in the shit. Bingo. I mean Nottingham at the 110-seater Curry Lounge. It's a big restaurant with even bigger problems, and I've only got five days to sort it out. 
This is a first for me, turning around an Indian restaurant. Now, the basic principles are exactly the same, no matter what the style of cuisine is. But, daunting task, very excited, but I think it's gonna be a fucking tough nut to crack. It's Friday night and the start of the weekend. The only time of the week when the curry lounge is busy. Owner Raz is also front of house manager and he loves showing off to the punters. How's that, mild, medium? Medium. Already the customers are running riot and creating their own curries. Thousands of years of Indian culture straight out the window. Remember Dave? He had a garlic, coconut and chilli naan. Yeah? And, uh, Is that on the menu? Garlic, coconut and chilli. No. Or did make them up? Nailed made the architect. Uh, yeah. She made them up. Yeah. Oh, and uh, uh, his lady is asking about the salmon. Is there cream in there? A little bit, yeah. She said, can you change it for yoghurt? Because you did last time. OK, fine. Yeah? So no one sticks to the menu here. They just order what they want. The menu said that. Well, have you seen the, have you seen the Are you mad? You should be confident but and happy with what you do is what's good enough for them. Do I look like all right? I'm a mad person, 100%. Is that your idea? No, of course. I will not take, I will not take such a drastic step. This is my boss idea. Finally, I get it. The pick and mix menu is a result of this former salesman trying to please everyone. Now, if you want lobster, but it happens to be a mild, but you like it hot, why the hell can't you have it hot? Yes, it pisses the staff off in the kitchen, but at the end of the day, if the customer wants it, they can have it as far as I'm concerned. With the pick and mix option, the customers can order over 100 variations of the dishes. It's a curry DIY disaster. Khan and his team are swamped with orders. He's losing it, and I'm not surprised. Yeah. Every check is coming with something very changed. Lambuna four ways. This ludicrous menu is slowing up service too. We've just been having a nice chat while we've been waiting for the food to arrive. We've been waiting 10-15 minutes. On. A while. A little while. As orders flood in, plates build up on the pass, and where fresh food's concerned, that's a disaster. It's got a big skin on there now. This, that is fine. Um, here! Oh. If Raz thinks his DIY menu makes his restaurant stand out from the competition, he couldn't be more wrong. It tasted like it was more like from a supermarket rather than kind of coming out for a nice yeah. meal out in so comparison. Pretty average. Fairly average. It's the first time we've been. Yeah. Probably, Would you come back? Probably not. No. As an Indian restaurant in yeah. Nottingham, yeah. is it average, above average? Or is it in the... It's a bit old style and no substance for me. Great towels in the uh, ladies. Why do you treat your kitchen like a conveyor belt? It's like a, it's like a banqueting kitchen here. There were so many orders pending and I have to go in and out, in and out, in and out to take out the food. I think deep down inside, you could do much better. Good job. Love, care and just a little bit of passion. What are you thinking? Shit, basically. Yeah. Um, we need to sort this out. I know damn well we could all do. Yeah. Damn sight better. Good night. Okay. Yep. Cheers, man. See you in the morning, morning yes? No Brian early, yes? Gentlemen, good night. Cheers, man. Damn. I haven't enjoyed it tonight. I haven't. It's the first time um, since I opened the restaurant. And I like her. So, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I'm going to go for a fag. See that. <clears throat> this restaurant has two major issues. Firstly, the restaurant's all blinged up and they've got a menu to match it. It's fucking humongous and ghastly. If I've got any chance of turning this around, the first thing I have to attack seriously is the food. It's hideous. Unbelievable. Raz has built a flash restaurant and a tacky menu to match. But the way I see it, that's nothing to brag about. So this morning, I've got to get Raz to see the error of his ways. For me, the heartbeat of any restaurant, everyone comes back knocking on the door, I want to taste the food again. I don't feel that here. Mm. I think you've got a fucking glamorous 1980s fucking Indian restaurant that's serving pretty mediocre Indian mm. food. And if you're going to spend 600, 700, three quarters of a million pounds, whatever it is, mm. fuck me, what you've got to become is individual. You know, it's, it is a bit hard for me to sit here and go, fuck, I've got all that wrong. 
I mean, I've still got to get yeah. this right. Nothing wrong with being proud at all. No. Providing you've got that level of fucking intelligence to fucking mm. rectify. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to start right this fucking minute. Okay. Yeah. I mean, literally. No, stay there. You don't All have right. to move. <laughs> I've got it already. Oh, crap. Yeah. Oh, la la. <coughs> That's one thing. Fuck me, have I been dying? There you go. That's for you. <laughs> We're doing both windows or one window? No, that's not coming off. Water on there first and just look. It's tinted glass, so it'll scratch. See? But, <laughs> Gordon, you're not... Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I've not done it to hurt anybody. I didn't do it to piss any of the winners off. If you had runners-up in the same style, mm. I would still turn around and say, Raz, do yourself a favour, get that shit off the window. Mm. It looks fucking hideous. I'll well, give you a hand to take it off, Gordon, but I just don't. That's very kind. If you can take the runners off, up. Uh, Gordon, I will take like... it off you, but I, I, what I, I'm getting pissed off about, you actually... I'm glad you are. Yeah, you, I am. I'm fucking cool. over the moon. I like when you get pissed off. It was meant to let customers know that we've just come runners-up in two awards. OK, do they know now? Who? Customers. What's the day? So we can get rid of it then. <laughs> okay, good. If you start there with the little runners up, the small bits and back, you may need some glasses to get it off. Please don't scratch the window. It's smoke glass. <laughs> Sorry, runners up, coming off. Sorry, only runners up. We'll try it harder next year. Only runners up. Next year we're going to win. Lovely. Slow down, you can't see the sign. <laughs> oh, shit, he's gone. Only runners up. Sorry, he's gone now. He's gone. Lovely. Thank you. I bet that fucking hurt, didn't it? No? I'm actually enjoying it. Ah? Huh? Now I've cleaned those windows, I can turn my attention to the biggest problem of all, the food. Like most Indian restaurants, the sauce stocks that form the base of the curries are prepared in advance. Incredibly, all the 130 create your own curries are made up from just three stocks. No wonder they all taste the same. Oh dear, I've also found jars of curry paste and frozen samosas. The only freshly prepared food is the naan bread. What a waste of talented chefs. 12 seconds each naan. You're like a little Harry Potter there in the corner. <laughs> I'm working your magic. The wizard of the naan. Well done, Harry. This isn't a restaurant kitchen, it's a food factory. Most of the time we get up in two hours, sometimes 100 cover, 120 cover. You have to give fast food. Quick, 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 quick. I've asked Khan to cook every dish on the menu. Holy mackerel. The amount of food there is extraordinary. Most of these dishes are made up from just a few sauces. There's no way on earth they can taste individual, and I'm going to prove it. Are you sure you don't do Botox? <laughs> no? Far too good looking, oh. right. Wrap that on. Uh, we're going to taste some food, and you're going to tell me what it is. OK, Tash? Here we are, my darling. First up, one of the most expensive dishes on the menu. King prawn cry? No. No. That's the lobster I had yesterday. Tash. Let's see if the rest of the waiting staff can do any better. The nation's favourite, chicken tikka masala. One of the most popular dishes on the menu. What is it? Tikka madrai. No. No. Oh, dear. Grahe mm. No. No. One last try. How about the one thing that shouldn't be anywhere near this restaurant? Tash, what is that? Chip. Chip, good girl. <laughs> Excellent. What are we running here? Indian restaurant. Indian restaurant. Excellent. None of the staff could tell one dish from another. You can't be that mediocre when you're fighting for survival with 18 other restaurants. You're a generous man, and it shows to what you sat in front of. You can't play to everybody. We've, we've tried to give every customer what do we Whatever he wants. Tin pineapple and curry just don't mix. It's not the average. No chef in the world will attempt to cook this. Mm. And your generous spirit is destroying the ambition of this restaurant. Raz's generous spirit is also destroying the ambition of his head waitress. It just looks bad that we don't know what's coming out from the kitchen. How can I be a head waitress when I don't even know what's on my menu? 
that's the upsetting thing about it. If the pick and mix menu has done this to his head waitress, what's it done to the man who has to cook it every night? Nottingham's got a growing Asian community and great markets selling exotic produce that you'd find on the streets of India. John, good morning. It's nice to see you here. Yeah, good to see you too. This is your local, yes? This is my local. This is where we're going. Local getting. market. Inspiration. All these shops are on the Curry Lounge doorstep, but Khan rarely visits them, choosing to order in his supplies instead. This part can be taken yeah, like out. A, like, like you a... can take it out, then just slice and toss it. Yeah. It's beautiful, tasty. See, so you seem to come alive in amongst all this. I have produce. Well, of course. Huh? Break this. There is hardly any seat. Yeah. It's great to see Khan excited about Indian food again. It's yeah. given me an idea. Slice, finally slice. You grew up in which region? Rajasthan. What was the first sort of big influence that your mother gave you in terms of food, taste? She used to make the korma, which was fantastic. Right. But not the korma, what we make here. No. Sweet ones. Let's pick up some ingredients today. Sure. Let's put that as a special this evening on Fine. the menu. Fine. And give it some authenticity from Absolutely. Your, your region. OK. Let's go and get the lamb. No compromise. Lovely. Thank you. Tonight's a big night. We're putting on a new dish you can't get in any run-of-the-mill curry house. But before we can hand out the menus, there's something I've been dying to do. Pull all these out. No more pick and mix. We're going back to simple, authentic, yeah, Indian cuisine. Yeah, so it's crucial no we tell the front of house team about the special yeah, yeah, yeah. so they okay. can push it. So, kitchen staff, why don't you explain what you're doing? Sure. Uh, we are making the, the authentic uh, lamb korma today. What if a customer wants chicken jow phrase is gone? It's not on the menu. Yeah. Have you seen how much food is on there? Yeah. So awesome. we're going to sell something else. The chef has the most. Raz doesn't seem happy, dish. but it's tonight I'm going to prove to him that Nottingham wants authentic dishes right. instead of dodgy DIY food. Let's get those cocktails done. Yes. Right. Let's go. Take yeah, out right. the pick and mixes from the menu, please. Nice, that one's gone. Spice. Yes. Can you give me a hand? You yeah. smile. Move. Cloves, oh. green cardamom. Khan's special is a medium spice dish from Hyderabad. And unlike Razi's pick and mix, this curry will be made from scratch every day. The meat is slow cooked on the bone with spices and browned onions. And the bone in there as well. I quite like the regional aspect with the bone inside. Absolutely. And serve it with the bone. It makes it look more authentic. Chili powder, turmeric and salt are added along with a garlic and ginger paste. Then left to cook gently for half an hour. Gorgeous. Uh, this is your lamb korma. Thank you. That for me, yeah, is perfect. Yeah, for Thank here. You. you know that. Thank huh? you very much. It tastes delicious. Thank you. This dish will get everyone hot for more. Yeah, Fire rice, sir. What would you like? Uh, I'm going to have the tandoori bar, please. Tandoori bar? Yes, please. But an hour into service, and not one person's ordered the lamb korma. What are Raz and his waiters up to? I've uh, been here before. Yeah. What have you ordered? Vegetable. Lovely, sir. Karate prawns. Lovely. Tell me. Um, so no one's gone for the special? No. We didn't actually hear about the special. We didn't hear about the special. We weren't told about any special. So. It'd be nice to explain the special. <laughs> OK. Excuse me two seconds. I was quickly picking the Yeah. <laughs> Going back to the term and explaining our special. The one we've worked on all day. Yes. Oh, dear. If the front of house team aren't behind the special, then it's down to just one man, Raz. Anyone would think he's resisting the changes to tonight's menu. I'm getting slightly agitated that it's all a little bit too casual. So I just need some drive behind it. Okay. Got to drive it. Okay. Not from the back seat, but from the front seat, yes? No problem. How are you doing, guys? You all right? Did you not go for the special? What was the special? <laughs> I'm not laughing, but if Raz won't push it, I know a man who will. Yeah. You look great. You look great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very great. Uh, it's Nottingham, not Bollywood. Right, fantastic. When you cook the bone long hours, it gives its own taste anyway. So the actual taste comes out of the meat. Try my favourite. I'll try. And you'll be safe. And me too. <laughs> if I... It's great to see Khan's passion for the dish that he created. He's like a different chef. How about yourself? Fried chicken. Let's go. At last, Khan's mum's lamb starts to sell, but no thanks to Raz. 
now you see the orders coming up. Everyone said the lamb was fantastic. Thank you. You said lamb was fantastic? Yeah. Good. That's great news. But they didn't complain it wasn't sweet enough. No, they didn't Because that's what they want here in Nottingham. I had lamb korma, which is medium and very, very tasty. It was very nice. Really enjoyed it. I never realised there were so many varieties of korma. But yeah, wonderful. That is really good news. We've already sold out of Khan's lamb korma. Now, that means they want that really nice, authentic style of cooking, as opposed to that sweet mush. But what's pissed me off more than anything is Raz is refusing to push the authentic special and still thinks they come here for the fucking pick and mix, which is bollocks. Without a doubt, the star of tonight's show is Khan. You're destined for Bollywood, you aren't you? You're too good looking to be a chef. No, no. You look like some sort of... Bollywood superstar. Uh, no, come on. Seriously. You are pulling my leg from a porn movie. Oh shit. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I knew I knew he's taking me somewhere, man. I missed that chance. Last night I realized the curry lounge is split down the middle. Kitchen versus front of house. Before I do any more work on the menu, I've got to get them all playing for the same team. Crucial. Bit of team bonding. When was the last time you got your team out together? I haven't. My guys meet on average once a month, whether it's go-karting, water polo. We haven't been a team yet. So we're now going to play the locals at their own game, <laughs> and we're going to whip their ass. How are you, buddy? Are you well? I've arranged Good for the curry lounge to play the local seat cricket team, and I've heard their batting average is high. <laughs> Raz is opening the batting with a difference. It's time the kitchen bowled him a few bouncers. Right, Raz. Go on. OK. <laughs> this, yeah, is what they call handicap, yeah? Uh, I'm going to do to you, OK, what you've been doing to your staff. Right. And so I want you to experience what they've been experiencing, All yeah, right. since they've been working with you. All so, right, one-handed. This time, <laughs> bowl, the fastest bowl you've ever done. <laughs> Move. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh shit! Oh, <laughs> Damn! Sorry, that's butter fingers. Sorry. <laughs> Good. <laughs> still here. <laughs> I can't believe it. He still managed to hit the fucking ball. <laughs> shit! Huh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll be a fall then. <laughs> Great determination, yeah? Sure, great batting and great innings. Why aren't you like that in the fucking restaurant? I wasn't going to get out, no matter what. I mean, it's... We can't lose. And it's, we can't lose. It's very competitive. And I think the last six balls, I've, I've just shown to myself that what I'm trying to do, I'm determined to do it, and I'm not going to fail. <laughs> I think that's what's been missing in me for the last two, three months. So I'm glad for that, one-handed or not. Come on, Tash! First time we've all been out together with the kitchen service staff. So, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Let's go for it. Harry, look at that big white screen down there. Think of one of your naan breads. Yeah. Let's go. Hit it. Hit it! Whoa. Oh, shit! Yeah. One over. Come on. Well, yeah. well played, guys. Well played. Fantastic effort. Thank you. The cricket was such a success, I thought we'd turned a corner. But this morning, I found out Raz has called a meeting and only invited the front of house staff. When is this guy ever going to learn? He's been an idiot, and I won't let him get away with this. Look at the sneaky little fuckers. Well, what did I say? Glen Building. Yeah. So now they're holding a meeting on their fucking own. Les Gwen. Yeah, pummel him. Yeah. I'd been at the curry lounge in Nottingham for three days, and I thought we were making progress. But after a great day of team bonding, Raz has gone behind my back. Let's go in. Yeah, pummel him. Yeah. Hi, Egon. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Hello. Excuse you get me. Crashing. <laughs> huh? well, you get oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. Let's let you having a meeting, right? Yeah. Right. 24 hours ago, we had a team building exercise, yeah. kitchen and dining room, yeah. which was fantastic. Yeah. 
24 hours later, you're having a meeting on your own. We wanted to look at the front of house situation, what we were going to do. And tomorrow morning, we want to sit down with everybody to go through what we want to do. Trust me, my team don't meet without the kitchen. The kitchen don't meet without the restaurant, because they're one. We've got to keep it together. Yeah. That's right. Communications. Mm. And communication, I think nothing can't be better than when we all sit together. Mm. Check out. Exactly. I may come out with a better idea than you there. Mm. Should be one family. We should big our legs, small tape our legs up together tomorrow, yes? <laughs> uh, if we can do service it. with that, yes? Yeah. That there looks like something out of the pharmaceutical. It's just a factory it's there. A mind look. Dumb. And what's the other big circle? Professional. I haven't got to that yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so frustrating. Because on the back of the cricket, bonding session, I thought he'd understood the importance of keeping your team together. And if he hasn't understood that now, he's never going to get the fucking message. I really put Razzie's back up by gate crashing the meeting, but I want to crack on and create a new menu of regional dishes. Time for a spot of tiffin. Tiffins are Indian lunchboxes, and 160,000 of them are delivered every day to office workers all over Mumbai. We're going to do the same here in Nottingham. The secret of this, yeah, is having a little bit of sort of authenticity. Classic tiffin box, yeah. we'll fill it up, vegetable, rice, stunning chicken curry, a nice little bit of naan bread, a fiver each, yeah? If we get six companies on board, mm. all ordering between 30 to 50 lunches a day, authentic, yeah. delicious curry, I swear to God, in two to three months' time, we could be doing 250 to 300 lunch a day. OK? Fine. Yeah? Done. Let's go. The tiffins will contain a light and tasty authentic chicken curry. Get some colour on the onions, yes? It's made by frying chopped onions in whole spices. Are we using the thigh, the chicken thigh, yes? Then adding chicken with chilli, nice. cumin and turmeric, and lots of fresh coriander. If we want to get busy Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for dinner, what a way of getting them into the restaurant by offering them a great lunch. I agree with you. Yeah? I absolutely agree with you. To go with the chicken, there's coconut-infused vegetables and an aromatic basmati rice, all topped off with a plain naan. Yeah, this is ready. Here we go. Yes. Can we come in the place? Not first one. I'll yeah. work with you. Fucking right. Yeah, that's a great idea. Why are you walking around with such a filthy work? Oh, filthy because I've been in your kitchen it looks cooking. It a good effect, Ralph, like you've been <laughs> Thank you. cooking. It looks a good effect. Second time yeah. you stuck up for me. I splashed it on myself this morning when I was brushing my teeth. Yeah. Hello, everybody. You're all right. Um, just a quick insight. Uh, we've got a really exciting lunch. Now, the average person here earns between 18 and 100 grand a year. We're charging... <laughs> we're charging five pound. Who would like one? Yeah, got one over there. One, two, one, three, three, four. Three. OK, Harry, work your magic. It is absolutely delicious. Change. Uh, any more? Five <laughs> minutes. You want change for that? Fantastic. Within five minutes, they've all gone. How can we sell out so quickly? Huh? 40 tiffin boxes at a fiver each. That's 200 quid. That should cheer up Raz. Who, who hasn't got a box? Well, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. 12 more, please. Tomorrow night, we're relaunching the Curry Lounge with an authentic regional menu. To help me, I'm calling in a mate from London. Alfred Prasad is the executive chef at Tamarin, my favourite Indian restaurant. At 29, he was the youngest Indian chef to win a coveted Michelin star. If you want good Indian regional cookery, he's the man. This man arrived this morning. Uh, I've been to this restaurant umpteen times. Um, it has a Michelin star. And he's here to work closely with me on stripping this back, All right. yes, to regional. Good. Yeah. No faffing around. No pick and mix. Right, you look more nervous now. What's the matter? Yeah, I'm excited. No, it's great. It's a bit of a surprise. Love that. Yeah. Nice surprise. Oh, yeah, right. yes. Are you happy now? Right. You weren't very happy yesterday when I came in. Now, we, I've got one of you in here now. Look at him. Sure. This is you ten years ago. Absolutely. In fact, you look the same, except he's got no hair. I know. Since I've been here, you're turning me grey. I never had look. this before. Yeah. With Alfred's help, Tonight, we'll give the people of Nottingham a menu that's tasty, authentic and truly unique. I think we get away with losing half 
of the junk. Conveniently half. Yeah. Starter wise, eight. I would eight, nine. Nine. Yeah, main course. Between ten and twelve, I think. Mm -hmm. The new dishes draw on the regional cooking skills of the chefs in the kitchen. The peshwari shampan, mutton chops marinated in papaya and cream, then grilled in the tandoor, are from the north of Pakistan. Whilst these grilled lamb kebabs from Hyderabad in Andhra Pradesh, and my favourite, Merg Mukmi from Punjab, spicy chicken cooked in cream tomatoes with ginger and fenugreek leaves. Raz, Gordon, here's a little touch of Merg. My favourite, yes. Absolutely delicious. Why are you shaking it around like that? It's, just, no, it's not a fucking frisbee. It's just a bit of oil in there. A bit of oil in there. Hello. Nice. Tender. The new menu is made up from dishes from northern regions of India and Pakistan. And with no main courses over £10.50, we're now highly competitive. Any starters here that you think is not suitable for Nottingham? At the moment, no. No. Definitely not. It has that authenticity? Yeah, yeah. But you see it in front of you, and you think, well, why don't we do this in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Khan, are you happy with the starters? Sure. Yeah, anything to say? To add? No? This is about yeah. getting out of a mediocre position mm -hmm. and putting us in something slightly unique. Yeah. Yes? Trust me. Yes? I do. Quality. There's one last thing that has to come off the menu. Who went out and saw this idea in a restaurant and thought, fuck me, this is amazing. Most We're going to stand out. Most of the restaurants up in the north have them. Most of the restaurants up north have them. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lie. We'll be serving naan bread, yeah, in a basket. OK? Yeah. Let's have a little taste, get familiar with it, and yeah. bounce ideas around. OK? Nice. Thank you, boys. Thank you. That's nice. Oh, nice. That's beautiful. Is it? Mm. Mm. There's none of that dark brown stodge consistency. It's bright, vibrant, and we managed to make it sexy. There were so many dishes I was going to say, where's the jowl phrasing, where's this, where's that? Yep. I don't give a shit, this is what they're getting. Yeah. At last, Raz has finally got the message. But now it's the head chef's turn to be unhappy. The menu is not complete, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. So we are telling on uh, that TV to the regionality, rice thani, that yep. there's nothing rice thani in that. We can't have every region on there. So this I'm is a really, base. I think I have got right to put my opinion here. Of course so you that's have. That's what I was doing. Of course. I put my opinion. We should not say which is not there. He is a very senior chef. He is from the same company from I am. I'm just clicked. What's happening? You're jealous because he's a lot younger than you. No, 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 no. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm Possibly. Uh, that, that, I thank think you. so. That's what it is. <laughs> I Look think at so. me. Yeah. Yes or no? Uh, no, no, no. I think that is a factor, Gordon. <laughs> I can I, feel I, the I tension say, in the air. I say my, my Sorry. And, 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 and also, this hasn't just been put together in three or four days. Mm. I'm not fucking around with anyone. Mm. This is I'll serious. This is serious. So I'd like you to show a little bit of support. This is just a starting point. I know. Thank you. Of going forward. We can add huh? stuff, we can yeah. change stuff. Yeah, okay. It's a starting no. point. Hold on a minute. He's not, right. this, it's not, it wasn't dead not... centre there. It was, it was one minute past 12. I want to put it at 12. I, mean, I, I, I know, know that chefs are <laughs> protective about their food and their menus. <laughs> Come on. No, no, but there's one, two, three, four out of place. <laughs> then it's fine. Huh? Let's get cracking, guys, yes? <laughs> Holy mackerel. Thank you, Mr. Thank Khan. You, thank you. I've got a surprise to get Khan back on board. Uh, gentlemen, come over quickly. I want to introduce you to somebody. Yes? This what is Raz. Hi, Raz. How are you? Come on. How Let's go. You remind me of one of my wives, actually. One of my wives? <laughs> What's that supposed one. to mean? These girls are from one of the top dance studios, Bollywood dance studios, yeah, in the Midlands. That's so they're here. It. They're going to have a little practice first, and then we're going to take it out on the streets, yeah? <laughs> we're going to announce to Nottingham. <laughs> and I mean announce to Nottingham, yeah? Tonight, yeah, <laughs> is our festive night. Tonight is the launch. With an hour till opening, the kitchen's busy preparing the new menu. Whilst we hit the streets to let Nottingham know the Curry Lounge's new menu is authentic, delicious and available tonight. Come on, Mr Khan, your restaurant needs you. Come on, Mr Khan, shake your booty. Are you going to join in? Excellent. OK. Come to the Curry Lounge this evening and come and experience this amazing, fabulous, authentic regional cookery. Everyone. Thank <laughs> you.
We're open. I've turned down the nightclub light, turned off the Bollywood blink, and now the kitchen is controlling the menu, not the customers. Here goes a brand new menu for this evening, and especially this evening, are the whole menu. The kitchen's buzzing, and the food looks absolutely delicious. It's nice to see you cooking, Mr. Kana. Put your heart back into it, yeah? Well, Good. Out front, Raz and the waiters have ditched their old pick and mix ways. Without the, without the coriander, though? Yeah, they won't be able to do it because they've got marinated it, it's got coriander inside it. That's okay. Yeah. Can't have it. Yeah? Can't have it. No. As it is. I'm not messing about, no. It'll be interesting to see how this pans out now over the next 45 minutes. These first six or seven tables have to come out quickly, otherwise, in half an hour's time, we're going to be fucking swamped. Big time. I've invited a special guest, Humayun Hussein, editor of the Tandoori magazine and a man who knows his curries. If anyone can judge the authenticity of the regional dishes, it's him. Right. Well, he's hooking that down, isn't he? Exactly. Like it's good. Yeah. Fuck me if he eats any more, he's going to burst. <laughs> Radically changing the menu in any restaurant is always risky. But if the curry lounge is to stand out from his competition, there's no alternative. But will Nottingham go for it? Uh, this is a massive improvement. Really good home cooking. We like it. I mean, tonight it's beautiful, but I have to, I have to admit, when we came before, it was, it was a bit oily, a bit greasy. Um, Helen didn't need to put any lip gloss on, I and mean, it just it just came free with the meal. Um, not good, but it's a vast improvement. It's really good. Really enjoying it tonight. Fantastic. The diners have gone for the new regional dishes and the dancing's paid come off. In, in. The restaurant's rammed. But I've spotted a problem at the VIP's table. Table 21, I haven't had their main course yet. I've just, I've just literally gone and did and chased it, so I'm, I don't know what's going on. So. What do they say? I'm going there now. Chef? What's the time of that check, please? 21. Do Quarter to eight. It's an hour Half ago. An hour. I know. All the other ones go. You tell them to slow down then. Now another table's kept waiting. Did you order a starter? I did, yes. What did you order? Take a thing, second one down. Hold on, I've got two lines. Oh no, but they'll be waiting. It's table 11. Don't keep them waiting. We can't afford to mess up tonight of all nights. There's no excuse. But now, for the moment of truth. What does our special guest think? I'm going to take uh, gentleman through to see Mr. Khan no, in the kitchen, no, yes? Mr. Khan, yeah. I'd like to introduce you. Do you mind? Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Gentleman from the Tandoori so, magazine. Right. How was the main course? Good to see. Main course, uh, main course was very good. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What, did, what did you have? I, well, the okay, we had the lamb shank. We had the, I, what, is it the dam ki moruk, I think, the, the chicken? Yeah. And I tell you, it was one of the best pindis I've tasted in, uh, in recent years. Fantastic. Thank you. Little bit of issue with the with the chicken, tough, dry, sauce very bland. Okay. Uh, breads, although they arrive late, as did our main courses anyway, were just fine. First night with the new menu. First night, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was but listen, no, thank you. You're on a on a good run, you know, and it's a simplified menu, so it works. We've pulled it off by the skin of our teeth. Raz has now got a curry house that could beat his many competitors, hands down. Total figures tonight: three thousand. Three hundred thirty-nine pounds. Three and a half grand. I'm sorry, but you only need to do that three nights a week, and you're yeah. on ten thousand pounds. Yeah. I break even. Yeah. I can't believe that. <laughs> it's fucking good. And the new menu we was expecting people to ask. Yep. For this and this. Yep. And they have asked. Yep. But it's been very easy. Yep. To say no. And now I'm sitting here, looking around me, people enjoying the food, the buzz, three and a half pound in the till. It's given me even more confidence to Good. make sure that this, this works. Good. So. Good. I'm feeling slightly drunk sat watching you behind that fucking waterfall now. <laughs> I feel like I've just sunk into oblivion. <laughs> Fuck me, I'm feeling sick. I have to go. Um, okay. okay. That was fantastic. 150 covers. That was a tall order on a brand new menu, so I really hope that Khan continues to fight that passion and really ignite himself and get cooking and stay regional. 
And Raz needs to run it, control it, and don't slip back to his old pharmaceutical salesman's way and stay off that pick and mix because that is a success. Taxi. I'm back in Nottingham. It's a month since I left owner Raz with a new menu and a packed restaurant. The burning question is, has Khan embraced that new menu? And I hope that Raz hasn't slipped back to his old pick and mix ways where he wants everything and anything on the menu. So far, it's looking good. Those runner-up stickers haven't made it back on the windows. Hi. Mr. Khan. Hi, how are you? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Looking as slick and cool as ever. I'm yes? Hi, man. How are you, sir? Nice, nice to see you, see you again. Likewise, good to see you good too. To see you. Business, how's it been? Good. Um, last couple of weeks we've uh, broken even for two weeks running. Oh, really? Fantastic. That's yeah. great news. Yeah, it's brilliant. I think the second day we had a chap who's been in a couple of times. We wanted chicken um, masala with prawns in it. I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. And he got quite bulky about it. He well, we're not doing it. But why don't you try the fish dish? Yeah. He tried it and in the comic card, he goes, it's the best fish dish he's ever had. Mm. Good. And he's been back since. Okay, good. Customers feedback from the new menu? Uh, people like it, especially the lamb korma. Mm -hmm. That's been a bit of a hit. And are you tasting the new dishes? Yeah. 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 So there's no need to chew gum then? It's a um, cardamom. Oh, it's a cardamom seed. Yeah. Nice. How cool is that? Yeah. Authentic. Authentic, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> Great news. The curry lounge is finally breaking even. And after only four weeks with my new menu, that's proof that Nottingham wants this style of Indian cookery. Tonight, there's such a crush of diners, I'm having trouble getting a table. Time for a spot of tiffin, then. So, thank you. Lovely. Mm. Very good. That's delicious. Absolutely delicious. Tastes great. No wonder this place is packed. If Raz keeps his cool and sticks to his guns, next year, the Curry Lounge won't be runner-up but winner of Nottingham's Restaurant of the Year. But trust Raz, there's one bit of ridiculous bling he couldn't resist bringing back. What are the swinging bread curtains? Stop, stop, stop. What are they doing back? The swinging bread curtains are back. Fucking unbelievable. Where is he? Where is he? Hey, Pinky, Pinky. Everything was going swimmingly beautiful, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, brilliantly. Yeah. Feedback on the food, yeah? What are the spanks doing back on the fucking antlers? What are they're, they doing? They're family now. We put them on a stand because they're too big for the basket. And if we put two, two baskets, that would be split between three or four people. Come with me. <laughs> Can I serve these customers first? Uh, I know it provides you. Oh, dear. Fucking hell, you will not learn, will you? Hold that over for me, please. Mr. Khan! Hello. Mr. Khan! Sir. Say goodbye. We have customers on Ashton. Good, you tell those customers when they don't see the antlers with a yeah. swinging naan to give me a call, okay? So now you're gonna tell me that your business is gonna go bust no, without your antlers. No. You, yeah, are coming with me down the road. You mean you're putting them in the bin? No, I'm not putting them in the bin at all. What are you going to do? I'm gonna show you. Well, you. Get out of the fucking way, I'll show you. <laughs> Five minutes. Let's put some money in the till. Go on, mate. Sorry, I'll get you a new one, okay? A fresh naan bread, okay? <laughs> Tash, can you order a new naan bread, please, on table seven? Right. Try to stay nice and calm throughout this moment, because we're on the way to a burial. <laughs> Any final wishes? Oh, curtains are up. Where's the vicar? Here we go. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, you can take that one. Uh, that'll feed the rats later. That, yeah, thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Have I waited for this moment? Ashes to ashes. <laughs> dust to dust. Yes. <laughs> Fucking hell. Done? Okay, done. Okay. done. What's the price per kilo now? About 60 pence. 60 pence a kilo. <laughs> that much? Come on, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Come on. You'll be fine. Hey, the killer! <laughs> <laughs> Now, you definitely won't be fucking using them again. Ever again. Hey. This reminds me of the cricket game. Let's get back to a fully booked <laughs> restaurant. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you got the key? No. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs>